What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of Before the Odds, the weekend recap, and what a weekend it was. Starting with Friday into Saturday, where we had our three Derby preps and our three Oaks preps, ended up being a crazy weekend with some crazy prices coming home, but also some of the favorites showing a little bit better as we get ready for the Kentucky Derby. All right, on Friday, we were at Keeneland. Um, I'm going to go through the picks a little differently this time, try and tell you what we played and some of the value plays that really came home and paid well. Okay, we started in race six. I had the six, her world, ended up coming home for Wesley Ward. And I also mentioned Nota Bene, who came home for second. That exacta. So that was my long shot play. Anytime you hear me talk about a long shot play, I'd probably add that horse in my exotics, especially if I don't have a lot of horses. I only had the six and the eight in that one. So I had the three, six, eight for an exacta box. Okay. And that ended up paying 23 on the dollar. So the cost of that is $6 and it would have paid you $23 on that bet. Or if you just liked my long shot to place, that would have paid well also if you took the horse to place. On to race seven, Corona Bolt. This was a good single by Big Willis. That horse looked great. Hajazi put up a fight, but Corona Bolt came home looking for that horse to go to the Pat Day Mile on Derby Day. I could see that horse going there. Could carry that speed one more furlong. It'll be interesting to see where they place him next. On to race eight. That was the turf race. Unfortunately, our favorite horse that both of us liked a lot, Carl Spackler, scratched. And when that happens, you got to make sure you don't ignore horses you had talked about earlier, whether it was to yourself or on the show. And one horse in particular, Mo Stash, a horse that I had gambled on um, prior in prior races, um, I had circled and talked about it on the show, but was so intrigued with this Carl Spackler figure that I only had two horses. Once Carl Spackler scratched, I wasn't that confident in my other horse. And then you just start adding other horses you don't really know or need. And I think it's at that point, maybe if a, a horse like that scratches, you almost skip that race, you know, looking looking back at it. But yes, um, Mostache came home well, second, second off the layoff. And Victoria Oliver had that horse ready, and Luis Saez read, read, ran that horse perfectly. And then finally, of course, the three-year-old Phillies in the Ashland. Another 20-to-1-plus shot wins the race. Crazy. Defining purpose. And that was another one of our value plays. I had the one five six in there, and it ended up being six five on the exacta. That paid $66 on the dollar. So a $1 exacta box for the one five six, and you would have brought home. It would have been a $6 bet. You would have been paid out. $66 defining purpose definitely a horse I like going forward but not going to be one of my favorites in the Oaks that's for sure um punch bowl ran really well the Brad Cox trained horse but that was a crazy race wonder wheel did exactly what I thought guns and graces scared me a little bit big Willis's long shot play but um just couldn't make the two turns uh thought thought the horse was um rode well Thought she made a good run on the turn, but yeah, defining purpose, brought it home at about 22 to 1. On to Saturday. This is where it gets crazy. You got races at Keeneland, you had races at Aqueduct, and you had races at Santa Anita. I'm just going to go over those the four races we talked about the, uh, at Santa Anita and Aqueduct. So at Aqueduct, we had the Gazelle and we had the Wood. The Gazelle, another one. Promise Her America, another big long shot for the Phillies comes home this just um strengthens my opinion on wet paint she is the only consistent three-year-old filly okay that that horse to me is above and beyond the best three-year-old filly in this crop now south lawn does scare me a little bit but that long shot in the gazelle coming home promise her america again which it was a great race the gazelle and the wood were both awesome races and the connections i am so happy for that these horses are going on to that first saturday and first friday in may that is awesome for them like in the wood actually um the one that we had hit show where i liked hit show who got second to a 
to Lord Miles, man. The connections were on the were on the track, going crazy. It was an awesome sight. I'm so happy for them. Like, yeah, I was, I was upset. Hit show got second, but what a race that was. Also, so you had two big long shots. Lord Miles was sixty to one to win the Wood Memorial. Another crazy price comes home. We didn't have that horse, unfortunately. That's why the horse was 60 to 1. Not a lot of people did. I bet those connections did, and they were excited to see him win it. So you've got Lord Miles going to the Kentucky Derby, and you've got Promise Her America going to the Kentucky Oaks. Interesting to see how these horses will do in those big competitive fields. And then we had the Santa Anita Oaks, where Faiza ended up winning, but won for Bob Baffert, so doesn't get any Oaks points. That horse, that, that horse, that horse, will not go to the Kentucky Oaks. And then you had the Santa Anita Derby. My horse that I have in my top five, Practical Move, did get the distance, looked good doing it. But also the Japan horse out of that race ran really well in second, in defeat. Now they went a mile and an eighth in the Santa Anita Derby. They're going to go a mile and a quarter in the Kentucky Derby. That's a little longer. Tell you what, watch out for that Japan horse. That horse... Is pretty good. Got second. I don't know if it's going to be enough points to get him into the Derby. I think it is. And I hope it is because he looked really good. And I, I respect the connections for coming over to America to punch a ticket here and not over there like it happens most of the time. To punch their ticket to the Kentucky Derby at Santa Anita, which is the great race place. And especially a, a place where a lot of um, past Kentucky Derby winners have come out of. So I thought that was awesome by the connections. I thought Practical Move ran an awesome race. And will definitely still be in my Derby top five. On to Keeneland. That's where we focused a lot of our energy. Willis had a nice day. Big Willis, his big, um, his one of his big value plays was Papilio. Papilio on the turf, second time in the States. Looked really good. Um, the horse, when they could finally get the horse straightened out, that horse exploded, finished well, and actually beat Cairo Consort on the wire. So... You know, Big Willis played the 2-3 exacta. That hit. So another big value play by both of us together um, to, to bring you home a nice exacta price. And then also in the Madison, uh, Midnight Olive. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Not Midnight. <laughs> Good Night Olive. Awesome, awesome race off the layoff. That horse was ready. And then Mary Quite Contrary, the Gulfstream Park stud. Ran awesome as well. And, of course, we brought home the 2-5 Ice Cold Exacta, which paid $5 on the dollar. If you had 100 you won 500 bucks on that Exacta. That hit pretty simply. Both had similar running styles. Just one was a little bit better than the other. And you got the job done. Good night, Olive. Awesome job by the Connections. Awesome ride by Arad. That horse is going to try and go back-to-back -back Philly and Mare sprints at the Breeders this year. Hope she can do it. But there's definitely a lot of competition out there. It'll be interesting to see. Mary, quite contrary, was like the little the little sister of the group. Looked really, really good. Really impressed with her race going forward. Then in the sprint, the Shaker Town, Big Willis, Caravel, good call. Breeders' Cup champ at forty two to one. Came back, loves the Keeneland turf. Almost got run down by Arresme Red. So that's interesting. If Arresme Red wasn't in the twelve slot and didn't go eight wide. You know, she might have had a shot to run her down. And I think I think that kind of goes with the theme at Keeneland, watching these races and having some of these horses this meet. If you have a horse that's a speed horse on two turns, you know, it's, it's very skeptical to me. They're going to have to work really hard to work out a great trip and to get on the front. So if I have a speed horse that wants to get on the front on a two-turn race, I want, I want he or she to be at least in the first eight slots. If we're going 9, 10, 11, 12, outside of all these other horses, I don't like that horse. And a lot of that happened this weekend. Then Arrest Me Red, Wesley Ward said he wanted that horse. He didn't mind that horse having a wide um, gate. But you go back and watch the race. I mean, Caravelle is off the turn on the straightaway already. And you have Arrest Me Red coming all the way around. And then finally starts to pick up and gain ground, but it's too late. And I feel like, yeah, you, you wanted her that wide, Wesley, but I don't think you wanted her to be in the 12th slot. Maybe the 8 or the 7. You know, so on those one-turn races, I want 1 through 7, 1 through 8, right there on those inside posts. I don't want the outside posts at all because they're going to have to work out the perfect trip. And then the same thing with the two-turn. I don't want my speed 
So any horse on the outside on one turn, I don't want. And then on the two turns, if it's speed on the outside, I'm not a big fan because they can't really work out the best trip. And if they do, they're going to have to work really, really hard to get it. So going back to Caravelle, sprint champion from last year, she came out, ran really well, beat the boys. So, you know, she's set up for a really good season. We'll see how she does. Another horse that I won at 42 to 1, I'm not going to want that horse as the favorite unless, you know, maybe I'm playing some type of pick three, pick four. I can do an exotic that I think a big price can come home with her. But most likely skip her races, honestly, until we get to the Breeders' Cup sprint. And even then, that's probably when I'll bet against her because last year she really shouldn't have won. She kind of got lucky. But you know what? She looked good. And definitely surprised me as well as she ran and none of the other horses could catch her. Went to the front, got the lead, won the race. Good call, Big Willis. And finally, in the bluegrass, tap it, Trice. Finally broke well. Um, you know, did some things that now, as I, as I pick my derby top five, as we're getting close to the Kentucky Derby, now I see this horse have, okay, now you're going to break well. You're going to sit close to the pace, and then you're going to come running, and you still have that that just grind stride that can finish horses off in the stretch. I like Tappet Trice in the Kentucky Derby. As long as that horse breaks well, like he did Saturday, and the way and the way Luis rides and knows how to freaking really get the most out of all his horses, I I really do like Tappet Trice. I do not... I do not like just Forte to win the Kentucky Derby. I thought a lot of horses have been running really good races. It's it, it's not surprising, but I mean a lot of a lot of Colts have been running really good races in this three year old division. It is a very to me it's a very competitive division, and I'm talking to probably about between you know horses one to six seven like, and I think they are all really competitive. It's going to really really be interesting on Derby Day. Because I think you could get some good odds on a horse that can win it. I, I think Forte is going to be the, the the favorite. No reason not to be. Um, had a terrible trip in the Florida Derby and still won the race against some decent talent. But a lot of green horses. I think this bluegrass was definitely a lot deeper than that race. I think a horse like Verifying looked good. I think Blazing Sevens, Big Willis's longer shot looked better. Um, but definitely Tap It Trice. I mean, that horse looks legit. Just those long strides. Gains ground with every step. I really do like that going into that Churchill Downs course. And the horse has had, has had rough trips and still, you know, finished strong. So you're at Kentucky Derby, you're in that, you're in that dirt, and Tabit Trice might be the horse to be able to finish getting dirt in the face, getting kicked back. That horse is used to it, used to going four or five wide, used to grinding it out, did a great job beating Verify, Verifying to the line. I still, and I think Verifying is another horse that's a very talented horse. That'll be right there. I still like hit show. I still like practical move. Okay, I still still like the win off the synthetic horse, two fills. I mean, there's there, there's a good group of about six or seven that I think can win this Kentucky Derby. And it's just awesome that it's going to come down to the perfect trip, the ride by the jockey, you know, then who it's going to be on that Saturday in May. It's going to be awesome to see. So that's what we had this weekend. You had Keeneland. You had the Santa Anita Derby, the Santa Anita Oaks. You had Aqueduct with the Gazelle. And the wood, we had the bluegrass, we had long shots again. The Phillies doing what the Phillies do. Very inconsistent, except for wet paint. And we'll see where South Long goes from there also. But what a great weekend it was. I hope you tuned in. I hope you were able to get some of our value plays home. And then let's get ready for another week. Uh, stay tuned. We've got, you know, Keeneland's going to be running Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're definitely going to break down um, Keeneland's Saturday card this week. But we might have some plays throughout the week. Uh, check it out on our Instagram. We appreciate you guys. Hey, happy Easter to all of you and your families. We love you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. This is Pick 5 Johnny with the Weekend Recap. Thank you. Much love. <laughs>